video, we're going to be talking about local climate factors. I'm going to discuss elevation, relief, and how bodies of water affect our climate. First, we'll talk about elevation. When we're talking about elevation, we're talking about the difference in location in relation to sea level. So when we're talking about a mountain, the elevation, the difference from the bottom of the mountain to the top, that elevation is quite significant. When we have an air mass at the bottom of a mountain, the air molecules within that air mass are closer together. The air is more dense. As that air mass moves up the mountain, the molecules start to spread apart, uh, mostly because there's not as much gravity holding them together. And as they spread apart, they, it's more difficult for them to trap heat. Therefore, the heat is released and the air mass gets cooler. Now, it doesn't mean that the air mass is hot when it's at the bottom of the mountain. It just means that it contains more heat than it does at the top. So higher elevation equals cooler temperatures. Now, relief is also connected to elevation. And it's specifically related in when there is a mountainous region close to a large body of water. So here we're imagining we have our ocean, and then we have our mountainous region, and on the other side we have our land. So when an air mass comes from a, the, a large body of water, it contains a lot of moisture. So it's, sort of, it's warm, moist air. It doesn't mean that it's hot, it just means that it contains more heat here than it does at the top. So as that moist, warm air starts to move up the windward side of the mountain, it begins to cool because the, part of the molecules are spreading apart. And as it cools, it can't contain its heat and precipitation. It results in condensation and precipitation. So we have more rain, more precipitation on the windward side of the mountain than we do on the leeward side or the continent side of the mountain. As the air mass moves over the mountain, and it starts to come down, those molecules start to come closer together, the air becomes more dense, and it's able to contain more heat. So we have that change in temperature, but we also have that release of precipitation. So on this side, it is warmer, wet air, and on this, it's uh, drier. Now, bodies of water, specifically large bodies of water. You're not going to get this kind of effect from a pond. Uh, so we have our land and we have our large body of water. Um, land takes, it, it, it um, increases its heat very quickly. It gets hot quickly, it cools quickly. Water, it, um, it, it, it heats and cools very, very slowly. Uh, so when we have land that's close to water, you have this movement of air across the water, which cools it, also absorbs moisture as it evaporates off the surface, and that air then travels across the land, affecting the climate. Uh, so it can be a really warm, sunny, sunny day, but when you, go to the when you go to the beach or you go close to the water, you get that cool breeze coming off of the water. This is why we always go to the beach when it's, you know, we always vacation in the beach, or we go to the beach when it's a hot day, because we get that cool sort of lake effect. This is also why when there are storms and, you know, and when, um, for snowstorms, for example, those people who live closer to the body of water will get more precipitation because the, the air is most moist closest to the water. And as it drops its moisture, um, it becomes less moist as it travels inland. So those are your global climate factors.